Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back to do another Emperor account review. This one for the Valor season. You all seem to really love this when I do it. So here we go again. Another super long in-depth overlook at my box, which will serve as a time capsule for me to be able to look back and see the season that was and kind of how I geared my characters. This season in particular was really frustrating. If I'm being honest with you, I barely made it into Emperor. I was comfortably in Emperor going into the Orbis Overdrive uh, situation on Thursday. Uh, and then I kind of self-destructed yesterday morning a little bit when I was starting to try to just get the last couple of points that I needed. Uh, largely, the meta is very casino-y because it revolves around Landy for the most part. And if Landy is not banned, then the entire format feels like it revolves around Lionheart Sermia anyway, because the dominant character is still Conqueror Lilius for the most part. Most people are trying to take or contest Conqueror Lilius. And uh, obviously Lionheart is a really good counter to that. And the way that people have her built right now is on destruction set with Golden Rose. And it's just a lot of damage and it could just wipe up your team in a hurry. It just, it's so explosive. So a lot of games just come down to live by the Sermia, die by the Sermia. If you watched any of my Twitch streams uh, over the past like month or so, that's pretty much been my takeaway for the format is live by the Sermia, die by the Sermia. And it, it's pretty accurate. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about Lionheart Sermia, when I show you the build that I ended up on at the very end, it'll become kind of apparent. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But there's like other really frustrating things about the format, especially if you're somebody like me who is turn two pretty much exclusively. I can not really play fast. Somebody like Red Oss, for example. Red, he can play very fast if he needs to be. But for me, it's pretty punishing. If you can only go slow, you will die to a lot of like Sharoon, Death Dealer Ray, Solitaria style drafts. Or you will die to the classic Architect Laika plus Straze last two picks. And it's just really hard because most of the people that are trying to play fast against you, they're usually taking or banning Zeo, which is kind of like the only thing you can really use to contest speed besides Sage Ball and Cezanne. And Sage is a lot worse this season, I feel like, than he was last season because uh, Savior Auden is commonly played and surprisingly soul weavers are just like really really strong i find that in general if you don't have two supports on your team you're probably losing in a standard v standard matchup because previously it was oh i ban your damage dealer but like for example if you take ocean breeze lulica to try to counter their conquer and you take no other supports even if you have pretty good dps matchups they'll just ban the lulica and just control your team so control is just so insanely strong right now. Like we talked about it in previous videos that control is really, really strong. But in this season in particular, it's very, very strong unless you have like something like Lionheart because like Lionheart can somehow randomly break out of these things. She's kind of the, the MVP, so to speak, of the season for me. And again, we'll talk more about her when we get to the actual thing. But before we get to the units, we have to very quickly grab everything here. I did not grab the actual frame. Uh, so you can see here. Splendid Valorous frame, which I'm not going to use because I think it's pretty ugly. But you can see rewarded to those who finished the season in the Emperor League in the World Arena Valorous season. And then, of course, we have the uh, the cool hidden piece Slash Rider Kral skin, which we'll put that on during the video. So enough stalling. Let's go take a look at my actual heroes now. First up is Edward Elric. I switched him to an injury build. Somewhere along the lines of the season. And it has been fantastic. A lot of his worst matchups. Like Apocalypse Ravi are a lot more manageable. The injury has come in super clutch. In a lot of matches. And I think that this is probably the best way to play him. I'm sure if you've watched other content creators. They've been saying that for a while now. It took me a, a bit to get to the switch. But I think it's really really good. As for Edward himself. I think that he is not anywhere near as good as he was two seasons ago, and he's even worse than he was last season. There are a lot of times where Ed honestly feels like, for lack of a better phrase, uh, he feels like a scam unit. Like he, he does his job admirably when your opponent is heavily focused on debuffs, but there are a lot of matches where like you feel like he should win, and then he has no game impact, and he loses. So he's definitely not the best, but he's definitely somebody I think that you still need to have geared. I'm a bit higher on him, I feel like, than most other people because a lot of people think he's like 
nearly unplayable right now at top level. Um, because again, he just doesn't work all the time. Like he doesn't work the way you would expect him. Basically, the player base is kind of figure out how to play against Edwards so he has less value. Next up is Holiday Euphine. I'll switch the imprint for you so you can see because I don't usually always use the health imprint. So this was actually a gift to me by Hezmana, which if you have not, uh, he's really, really good uh, Falconer Clary player, uh, waifu enthusiast. He's, you know, somebody's well known in the Twitch community for sure. Very, very good and knowledgeable player. Um, mine is not entirely reforged yet. As you can see, I didn't get this neck, so it should be 260 speed. But this was his gift to me as somebody who struggles against fast opponents. I kept complaining like, hey, my opponents are banning or taking Zeo and then just trying to run me down with like Ran and Peyra. What do I do? And he was like, hey, you have Holiday Euphine. This is the character you want to be playing. So you play her on Snow Crystal. When they land a non-critical hit, you get a bit of combat readiness boost. And then obviously she has the massive evasion chance on her S2, let's eat together. So there's a very, very, very high chance uh, that when your opponent uses Para S2 or Ran S3, Holiday Euphine just shoots to the front uh, and then goes, hey, it's my turn after you used your S3. I'm going to use Euphine special here. Get rid of all the debuffs you just put on my team. Push up my team. And now I control the pace of the match. So yeah, Holiday Euphine was super clutch in the last day or two. Uh, really, really good character to have built in this same style. If you're struggling against Ran and Para, then this is the way you want to build her. Uh, probably try and go a little bit faster than me. Like this is all the speed gear I could spare at 260. Hez recommends somewhere closer to 270 though when I was talking to him. Hey look, it's my Charlotte that is exactly the same as she was for the last like three seasons that I have done this for. Uh, yeah, the Charlotte is, it's fine. Like she's really good against Navy Captain Landy, but my build is definitely due for an overhaul. This is really squishy in today's day and age. Like she would get blown up really, really bad. I almost didn't play her at all the entire season. I think I played her like two games total. So yeah, mine's definitely due for an overhaul. Um, but definitely if you're struggling against Landy, this is one of the counter picks you can take against her. Uh, Wintenberg Waifu Ilanav, I played her like, Two or three games this season. Uh, as you should see my Albrus is only plus 15 now. I had to take the good one to give it to Navy Captain Landy. Still a fine pick. Just recognize that she's probably going to get focused. And there's a lot of times where she's just going to lose you the game instead of winning you the game. Famously in the World Championship, uh, one of Poopa's opponents picked uh, Alencia Ilanov against him and lost because it just wasn't a tanky enough Ilanov. It just didn't have enough game impact. So that's why, again, I still advocate going for as tanky as possible on the character. Uh Still really fun unit, but I didn't want to gamble my points later later on in the season with this character. Uh, Milam. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is slightly different than the last time you guys have seen it, but it's still the same logic. Just really tanky counter set Milam on, uh, you know, here, upgraded Dragon Knuckles. Surprisingly got a decent amount of use out of her in the last week or so because a lot of people like to pick Green Landy to counter Navy Captain Landy because Green Landy can't be uh, counterattacked. So Milam actually came in clutch and won me several games as a result. Politis, uh, this is, I think, slightly worse than the last time you've seen it, but I still wanted to have Politis on my best Abyssal Crown so that that way, if I run into an Ahmed draft, I really wanted to have the ability to have a character that could use the Estru Astral Glide uh, and then just kind of stun the entire enemy team. That's something I was really looking forward to having. Ahmed is something that I think a lot of slow players really struggle with. And I think she is very problematic for players with my play style, but she's not picked commonly enough anymore for me to really like, you know, complain about it. Or I think other people will complain about it too much just because again, she's not commonly seen. I feel like in the emperor and legend ratings, like if you, you know, like if you, you've run into them before, you'll know who's trying to play Ahmed. Like there's a couple of people that I, I will look at the username and be like, yeah, this is an Ahmed player. And I'll probably just end up uh, pre-banning that character as a result. But uh, I think at lower ranks, uh, you don't actually have that luxury. Because it's a wider pool of people that you're playing against. But yeah, the Ahmed is definitely a big issue. And Politis is one of the only outs that we have to it. Researcher Carrot. This was actually just built largely for, uh, I believe... Uh, Nightmare Raid. I think my, it might have a little bit more effectiveness. And I swapped it over to what it is now. 
Uh, this was largely here just for Green Landy because, again, that character kept coming up uh, a fair amount in the last week. Uh, otherwise, this is just your standard researcher character. I'm really only ever picking it into Green Landy. Roy Mustban. Oh, absolutely incredible character. I love playing this character so much. He actually won me my final game of the season. He was the, the person to put it away and seal the deal and get us into Emperor. Um, I finished, like I think, like 35-48 at the end of the day. And the cutoff, I think, was 35-35. So, like I said, we barely got in there. Even though I finished around like rank 600, we barely squeaked it out uh, for the most part. All of Emperor was kind of condensed within a 60-something point window, I believe. Maybe 70 point window. Like, almost all of it. Not all of it. Like, if you were between, like, rank 101 to, like, 150, it was pretty up there. It was in, like, the 3600s for sure. But, like, I ran into people who were, like, rank, like, 152 or something. And they were, like, only, like, 3580. Right? 3590 or something. So, it's not that big of a gap between... The very tippy top of Emperor this year and the very uh, bottom of where the cutoff was. There's a lot of Emperor that's like in that range. And I think that's largely because most of us didn't play a, a ton of games. I think I did about 700 games total this season, which is about 100 more, uh, 70 to 100 more than last season. But overall, Roy was really, really good. I think that this is just such a strong character to have in your 4 or 5 pick slot. He's so fun to play. He's so explosive, you know. No pun not intended. Uh, when he works, he feels really, really good. There are just certain bruiser drafts where, like, they can't beat it. Like, if they have, like, A. Ravi and, like, Lionheart and, like, no other real, like, way to kind of contest Roy, like, he's kind of a must ban. Like, if they're just playing, like, a, a straight up fair bruiser game, he's really difficult for them to actually deal with. Shuna, this is slightly reworked in the last time you've seen it. I tried Hezmana's suggestion of going really fast on this character at, like, 240, 245 with Soul Consolation which is Ocean Breeze Lulica's artifact, to basically overtake Architect Laika. But it didn't come up a lot. And I felt that Shuna wasn't, for me at least, as good on Soul Consolation. I was losing more games than I was winning. So I went back to my Unfading Memories build, and I started picking up quite a lot of games as a result. Uh, not the MVP like she was last season, but still really good, right? Like very strong Soul Weaver. I think that right now, I think behind Mediator, she's my second favorite support to draft. Uh, Destina being my third. I think Destina loses a little bit of tempo. We'll talk more about that when we get to Destina, which is why I think I prefer Shuna. I think Shuna does a bit more in a proactive game style. Like She could still be a reactive if we need it, but she definitely feels like she's a bit more uh, proactive. And maybe that's just because I, uh, I have her built at 220 versus my Destina, which is like 200 or so. Uh, here's Shu. I didn't draft her once the entire uh, season. As you can see, I gutted her of almost all of her good gear. My Shu is pretty bad this season. If you want to see a good Shu, go look at my Shu from the previous two seasons. Part of the reason why uh, the Shu is uh, not so good is because we put some of uh, the good artifact is actually on Lethe. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure Prayer of Solitude, uh, this isn't even my best one. I've been playing the last day without the best one because I moved a bunch of stuff in. Uh, around in the final hour. So if you'll excuse me, let's go put her back on her actual good one here at plus 24. So this gives her about 30k HP inside of the game. Lethe is my favorite character to play this season. She is super good against Lionheart Sermia. She is super good against Navy Captain Landy. A lot of these like I guess cheese casino style compositions, Lethe's just really good against and She's just surprisingly good into a lot of things that you wouldn't expect, like Sylvan Sage Vivian. She's pretty decent into, pretty good into Icarina. She has just a pretty good matchup spread overall. Like, if you have Lethe, your opponent is probably going to try to take injury. Like, that's, like, the only real out, like, Alencia, Apocalypse Ravi, Death Dealer Ray, uh, or, like, Sharoon. Like, they have to pick one of those characters. If they don't, then this, uh, this beauty just runs over... Uh, everyone and just kind of wins the game. So many clutch games won by her. Like people think like, oh, he only has Lethia and no other damage. He can't possibly win. And then you get inside the game and she's just this 30k HP, 300 speed after speed buff juggernaut that's just running over everybody. I love this character. I think she's just, again, super, super fun. And I always love making the gravity squeeze joke whenever I go for the, the uh, call of the abyss. It's really, really satisfying. 
Uh, Rem. Rem actually was important this season, even though I'm missing a reforge. Uh, a lot of Cleave players in the last, like, week or so, because obviously they haven't been playing, so they're trying to make up for lost time with volume as opposed to, like, a, a sound strategy. And a lot of Cleaves are going with Jacko Valentine, which really struggles against, like, super bulky characters and blue characters. So if you have, like, a team of just, like, two tanks and, like, Ikarina and Rem... It's so difficult for them to actually cleave through you. So I really appreciated the fact that I didn't fully ungear Ram. I kept her on something, and surprisingly, it, it actually mattered quite a bit. I, Karina, uh, this is the same one, I believe, from last season. Karina was incredibly frustrating to play against this season. Uh, for me, surprisingly, because of how I've chosen to play Zia. And this version of Karina, obviously Karina counters the version of Zio that I play because my S3 will always do over 50% of their health. So that was a bit frustrating. Uh, Karina is still just one of those premier anti-aggro units, and she's surprisingly good into Lionheart Sermia because people have kind of foregone the lifesteal like with ER build in favor of this destruction critical hit chance or destruction defense set build. So Karina's really, really good there. Also fairly good against Navy Captain Landy, who's like the best character it feels like in the entire game right now so being able to defense break one of those characters and take them out is really good and just overall is a solid blue damage dealer probably the best blue damage dealer in the entire format para uh so this is my 300 speed para i think this hasn't changed since last uh season honestly i if i could have any character belt well i wish it was para like i really would love to have like you know 100 effectiveness or like 130 effectiveness para with like 1200 defense 14k hp 310 speed like that nothing would make me happier than to have a character like that in my roster but i'm still cursed despite the fact that i farm wyvern heavily i still never can break 16 or 17 speed on a speed set piece so i'm just going to always be doomed with uh, a really slow wolf luna and it really sucks character is incredible in the 3-4 pick slot um, enables a lot of cre uh, cleave comps, enables a lot of aggro comps, is a necessary pickup when your opponent already is the aggressor, like they have Conqueror. You can't just pick like Hangai, Arabi, Arwell, right, in your like first couple of slots and then like another support. Maybe you take like Destina or something or just like maybe a Savior Auden. I don't know. You can't just take slow characters uh, in those slots because what ends up happening is your opponent takes Architect Laika and Straze and then you just... They just ban your last. There's nothing you can do that can contest both of those characters just running over your entire team. And it sucks. So you have to have Para be essentially like another tank. Like I would say she's like my third most drafted tank in air quotes behind um, Last Rider Crow and like Yulha. Um, she's like tied with Arwell basically. Uh, so you kind of have to have her. It's really important. And even like slow players... You kind of just have to throw all of your fastest stuff on Para and just pray for the best. Surprisingly, 300 was enough to get me there most of the time. Again, I really wish I was like 310. That's like a real Para. That's my dream character, my dream build right now. One day I just, like, I, I go to sleep at night and I just dream of having a 310 speed Para. Arya, um, still a really fun unit to play. Episode 5 has reaffirmed that I hate this character with a passion, though, in the story. She is so annoying and blatantly racist <laughs> um so yeah this character is kind of clutch i draft her probably more often than i should uh but i think that there are just a lot of spots again in those slow drafts where your opponent just can't get to you like if they have like a ravi and like maybe like an Auden, for example you can kind of cheese it out there like she's pretty much strictly a fifth pick uh, and that's kind of it. And she needs proper support. You need her with like another tank to help mitigate the damage. And you need to have um, uh, some kind of soul weaver like your Destinas, your Shunas, things like that. Dien. I built Dien this past week because I realized that having Navy Captain Landy and Dien together is kind of like annoying as all hell to fight. Like having Navy Captain Landy with crit resistance buff is just like maddening and very difficult for your opponent to beat. And unless they massively accelerate and pivot into something very, very aggressive, they're probably not going to win as long as you have DN. So that's why I ended up building her. She won me a fair number of games by going something like Navy Captain Landy first pick, Yulha DN second pick. That kind of boxes out a lot of the standard drafts that I'm used to playing against. And that forces them again to go super cleave, basically. Like they have to rush me down. They have to play super aggressively or 
just hard pivot to something that's like very, very control oriented and pray that I don't pick another supporter uh, or they're just going to have to have having to play against whatever my second DPS pick is and ban Landy. So I definitely don't regret uh, actually rebuilding this character. Mine's a little scuffed. Uh, I just don't have a lot of Soul Weaver gear to go around. It's just kind of being used pretty much everywhere uh, on all my other Weavers. Alencia, this is basically the same one as the previous two videos that I have had her on uh, on injury set. It's fine. Like, it's a standard injury Alencia. You bring her out versus Apocalypse Robbie. Otherwise, she just doesn't really see any play. It's She's pretty much strictly for the A-Robbie matchup. Uh, Arunka. Still not reforged. Uh, I played her like maybe like three or four times, and I only play her into Last Rider Crow with Inos 2.0 when my opponent is playing Dirt Slow. That is like literally the only time that I play her. Uh, so yeah, that that's pretty much it. Uh, Rimuru actually ran into a fair number of uh, Command Model Leica cleavers on the last day or two. So uh, just really good to have this character for that matchup. Also, fairly good into certain things like Navy Captain Landy. If uh, they just don't have any other like good DPS, you can kind of just burst it because of the true damage. Um, and yeah, it just I still think this character is good. Like I know people are just not uh, used to seeing him or just really down on him in general, but I, I really like this character. I just think he's flexible and deserves to be played more uh, than he actually is. So, you know, standard build here on Rimuru, pen set, immunity for the Leica matchup could hit chance to supplement our actual uh, lack of stats. Here's my scuffed Zahak. I wish he was faster. Uh, and as you can see, my portrait here is a uh, prelude to a new era and not leveled. So I'm just leaving stats on the table. Um, I'm just out of plus 30 portraits and I ran out of time uh, in getting it to work. I had him on Benny Mars Tachi and that actually ended up costing me like two games over the span of the last week. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. I can't play Tachi until I'm plus 30. We're just going with portrait. Ah, oh, crap. All my good portraits are in use. Well, I guess Zahak is just going to have to make do with this. I wish he was 270 speed, but a lot of his gear ended up going to make Zeo better and last piece Karin. Very, very important unit when your opponent has dodge units and you have the turn one initiative or your opponent is like very bruiser heavy and you also have the turn one initiative. You can basically injure like Apocalypse Robbie, bring her down to like 60% of her max HP and then she becomes much more manageable. Green Armin, uh, strictly for the Cleave matchup. Very similar to how she was in previous seasons. Only a plus 15 Elbrus Ritual Sword, though, sadly. Again, my 230 Elbruses are on characters that I think that deserve it more. If you are getting into RTA and you don't have speed, this unit, I feel like, is a must-build. Definitely build this character. The secret to making it work is the critical hit chance necklace on Destruction Set. So if you're looking for pointers on how to build this character, this is the glue that holds it all together. Mort Daddy, even though he's not fully reforged, I think Mort is so good right now. Like, I, my build is not it. This is the build that everybody, I think, is playing right now. And it's pretty good. Like, this build's good. Like, not, like, amazing. It's pretty good. But I've ran into uh, It's Suri on ladder several times. And our matches have been epic. And he's been playing a lifesteal Mort. And it's crazy powerful. He sent me some of the information on it. And we are going to do a how to play Mort finally. Because I know you guys have been asking for it for about a year or so. And I'm going to talk more about that build in this that video. But right now, I think Mort is the best he's ever been. He is a solid like high tier 3, low tier 2 character. Uh, so you could definitely get some wins with him. But he's not exactly like the best thing that you can be playing uh, for sure. The biggest problem with him is actually extermination. The multipliers on this move are just trash. We are at the point now where I think I can safely say what is holding Mort back from being truly great is the damage on extermination. Because Advent Mortelix feels good. It comes up really often. And Absolute Dignity is actually just insanely busted right now. It is such a good passive skill. Immune to Stun and Sleep, which are two insanely prominent debuffs right now. Has the 30% counterattack chance. Has a 100% chance to give crit resistance to all allies and speed buff to himself. So he's just zooming. And then obviously when paired with his artifact, Ancient Dragon's Legacy, he also gets a critical hit damage buff. So he's just like booking it. Uh, hard to kill. Annoying. Does, uh, you know, respectable damage with the critical hit damage buff. Hits like a noodle without it. But yeah, at this point, Extermination, if this hit 
significantly harder. Like if we took it from like an 8% to like a 16% health multiplier, we'd be a business. This character would actually be one of the best bruisers, I feel like. Sanya. Uh, this is my lifesteal Sanya from, I think, the previous season. There might be a couple of changes to it, a couple of like stat swaps and things like that. My boots are awful on this, by the way, which is why I haven't reforged them. I am most likely going to take a new set of boots for Sanya with the crafting event, and I probably will make a video on that explaining my thought process so that that way you guys can see what you should be taking during the crafting event, uh, and then I'll show you why I'm going to take the Sanya boots and explain all that in a, probably another video. If there's anything you want to know about the crafting event, let me know down in the comments below and I will try to make sure to get it in there if I decide to make that video. Uh, just staple anti-aggressive unit. Won me a fair number of games despite the fact that my gear is scuffed and I just don't have uh, finished boots. Still just standard, like I said, anti-cleave unit. Really, really good. Yulha. So yes, that is, you see that right, that is a 75 uh, body. It's because I used a bunch of other gear that was on her to make Lionheart Sermia. I can actually do you guys the solid now and put my Yulha back to where she was because I actually took apart said Lionheart Sermia. So my Yulha used to look like this, I believe, beforehand. So here you go. This is my second most drafted tank of the season. And that is because... Symphony of Agony is really good when your opponent has a lot of AoE damage. Do you know what people are drafting often? AoE damage. Navy Captain Landy, Lionheart Sermia, Last Rider Crow. So you get to revenge kill with Symphony of Agony very, very quickly. And then the revenge set helps me book it so that that way after I proc the S2 here, Murderous Intent, I get a big boost to speed. I get to zoom right to the top really quickly and then get off that Symphony and win the game for my team. Uh, yeah, character super good. I am pulling uh, very much so for those people in the world championship that are trying to get Yulha skins if they win. I would love a Yulha skin so, so much. Uh, the base design is fine, but I definitely think that uh, this girl could use uh, some new duds. So I'm really looking forward to that and hope one of them wins. If not them, then please uh, give me the person that's going to try and get the Sanya skin. Those are the two skins I'm hoping for out of the world championship. Celine, um, surprisingly, won me a number of games versus Pirate Captain Flan, of all things, uh, because she guarantees procs it. But other than that, I don't really play her. As you can tell, she's kind of on, like, leftover gear. Yes, my World Championship ring is on her, but, like, the left side here is kind of uh, not reforged, and it's kind of not exactly the best gear. As you can see, try and get her reasonably tanky and just try to make sure that we do as much damage as we actually possibly can. Uh, that's kind of her role. She's there for like one to two matchups a season and gets played like maybe 10 games or less overall. She's just really not it compared to Polidus. Uh, Vildred didn't draft him once all season. It's literally for the speed imprint if I feel like I need to race. Otherwise, he is just there for my Azimatic 13 one shot. Uh, Violet. Surprisingly, uh, how for how scuffed this is, normally I just use this for Automaton Tower and call it a day. That's why it's like not reforged. It's just there to have him be my frontliner for Automaton Tower. But surprisingly, he won me a lot of games because a lot of the cleave-based strategies are going like Ran, Peyra as a backup, Jacko, Zeo, and then their last one is Summer Break Charlotte, and you just ban the, the Jacko and take the Violet, and they can't win, and they just kill themselves. And it feels great. So I got two or three people... When they try to use that draft against me with Violet. But otherwise, like, I don't think Violet is particularly good. Like, he's just worth having geared for that exact moment. We're like, oh, man, he's all blue. I got this. Landy. Um, so a lot of people tried to uh, play Landy in this past week. And so I followed suit. And I also wanted a really strong Landy in order to be able to fight against Navy Captain Landy. But I didn't want one that was, like, super squishy. So that that way, if... My opponents, or I would say my teammates, accidentally proc'd Salvo. My Landy just gets exposed and auto-dies. So as you can see, she's fairly tanky at the expense of speed. But we have a ton of extra damage here, uh, you know, compared to where we normally are. We're usually at like 3,200 and like 250. We're at 3,400 and 270 now, which is a bit higher. So like we basically dropped our speed by about 40, raised the bulk and the damage a bit. Um, this is a really high-end Landy, by the way. So I don't expect people watching this to actually be able to emulate this. This is like 448 gear score. So it's really, really high. This is like some of my best gear because I felt that having Green Landy to fight Navy Captain Landy in the last week was pretty good. 
Um, and she won me most of the games. I was trying Wall of Water on her uh, for like two, like two weeks ago, I want to say. And it was doing fine. But in the last week, it ended up costing me quite a number of games. So I just went back to All Reliable, which is, of course, Guiding Light. Destina. Um, used her surprisingly a lot against Cleave this season. Less against standard players because she ended up getting like destroyed or just not having enough tempo. I think my build is actually too slow. I think I need to go like 215 in order for her to feel more like Sh uh, Shuna. It's really, really annoying to play uh, Destina in, in this meta, I feel like, against standard. Because, again, I feel like you just don't have enough tempo with my level of speed. I do like my Destina, but, again, I just I think I need to change something. It's probably the speed. Still a good Soul Weaver, just not as good, in my opinion, as, like, Lulika, Hangai, or, like, uh, you know, Shuna. They're just better. Speaking of uh, Ocean Breeze Lulika here, uh, this is... One of the characters I was using quite a lot in the last like two weeks into um, uh, what is it, uh, Conqueror Lilius. The problem ended up being that I would go Conquer or go Ocean Breeze Lulica plus Lionheart into Conqueror Lilius because I thought that was a really strong opening, and then I would be immediately met with Mediator Inferno Kawazu on the backswing, and that puts a huge damper on that entire draft's momentum. Also, Solitary sees a lot of play and just makes this character feel absolutely worthless. So I'm not as high on Ocean Breeze Lulica as I was like a month ago. I think that she is good, um, but not as good as Shuna is or Mediator. I think I would rather have either of those characters a lot. There was a lot of times where my opponent would take Conqueror in the last day, and I would rather take Mediator Lionheart than Ocean Breeze Lionheart uh, for sure. So uh, yeah, so like I said, I'm a little bit down on her. She's on Ice Crystals. Uh, probably should be on the 24 one here because I used her more often than Destina. I was on Soul Constellation for a while, but after losing a lot of games from having uh, a lack of healing, when she's my only support, I went to Guardian Ice Crystals and it ended up helping out quite a lot. Uh, here's my Scuffed Rowana that's just on whatever we have laying around that's not in use. Um, Stella Harpa for her bad matchups to help make them actually winnable. Super important versus Navy Captain Landy. If you can squeeze this in in the 4-5, it's worth it. I think people who go like Last Rider Rowana on the 1-2, that's pretty bad because you open yourselves uh, up to getting just cleaved. Um, and even like somebody that's slow like me actually ended up able to just be super aggressive against certain people and just like wreck them. So yeah, I don't think you want to pick Rowana early in the draft, but I do think she is somebody that's very, very strong against Landy. Sharoon. Oh man, do I hate this character. I hate this character with a passion. Uh, I decided to go for a higher effectiveness build on counter as opposed to the split effectiveness ER where like people have like 100 effectiveness, 100 ER. Um, I didn't really have the gear to make that work. I just wanted to use the character. Um, this character is absolutely obnoxious to play against, man. So the S1, Venom's a character, so good against, you know, bruisers that are health scaling. Pushes back skill cooldowns. And that's super bad for you if you have Hangai because if you press Esther on Hangai, May You Perish just strips everything and undoes all of the buffs. And if you don't press anything, then your Hangai just gets permanently locked out of his skills because of how fragile. It's really, really aggravating. If you only have like Hangai and like no other supports, Sharoon just kind of just dunks your whole team. And then she gets this, you know, the combat readiness push from the S2 here and the random buff. Like nothing is more infuriating then you're being against like Savior Auden and it keeps getting crit damage buff and barrier or you're against like uh, Lone Crescent Bologna and it keeps getting barrier and crit damage buff and you're just like, dude, how do I win this game? Like it's so frustrating. And the teams that she's picked into like really can't burst her or deal with her. And it, again, man, this character is just so annoying. Like I have made people, I've, I'm pretty sure rage quit matches with this character. And she really makes me want to rage quit as well. This character is the real deal. And I think if you want to climb and you're a slower player, this is definitely somebody that you want to have in your arsenal. Oh, look, it's Smug Girl. The same way she's been built for the last two seasons, three seasons, four seasons. Who knows at this point? Uh, it hasn't, my build has not changed in any of the things except for the artifact slot, which is now on Nostalgic Music Box. I tried Proof of Valor. The problem is that the other two characters that I have on Proof, um, or like when I had her, I took one away from one and then put Proof on her. 
I commonly draft a Robbie. I think a Robbie is significantly worse. Not on proof. That's just my opinion. I know that there are other people out there who play like Sam Sarah and other stuff. Maybe it's because I don't have a high enough Sam Sarah to feel that way. Um, even like Lethe's artifact. I tried that. I just don't like anything other than proof on a Robbie. And I commonly draft a Robbie and Lilies together. And that's a non bow. You can't have two proofs on the same team. And that would cost me games. Previously, I used Champions Trophy, but Lionheart's in like every game and having a stun uh, as your artifact feels so much worse when it just gets cleansed the second you use a dual attack. So uh, I couldn't think of anything else. So I went with Nostalgic Music Box for just the added value uh, over the course of turns. Is probably, in my opinion, the best character in the game right now. It's between her and Navy Captain Landy. But if I had to pick, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably Conqueror because Conqueror can control drafts and bring you back from the depths of hell. I know Landy can as well, but man, like just there's so many games where like I just win because Conqueror really just is that broken. Like having Conqueror on one, uh, you could counterplay against Landy, I feel like reasonably well. It's so damn hard to play against Conqueror. Like, like it's kind of just Lionheart and Prey. Live by the Sermia, die by the Sermia. Like, a lot of the things you think counter Conqueror don't do a good enough job, I feel like, of countering Conqueror right now because they cause chain reactions that truly that just counter other stuff. So like I said, if you go, like, Lulica against this, you're met with, like, Inferno Kawazi, right? You go Lionheart, you're met with Lethe, right? It's just frustrating. You go Zeo, you might be met with another fast character, like uh, maybe a DJB to kind of pop them out of it. Is, man, Conqueror is just broken. Like, we, we're, uh, what, 22 months, 21 months into this character's release, and she's still on top, man. She's Conqueror for a reason. Lionheart Sermia. So this is my Lionheart from last season, and I switched to this yesterday afternoon because I was on for the last, like, week the Golden Rose Destruction build that you see commonly played on Worlds. And I have to admit, really impressive damage. You sweep people up in a hurry. And I've heard people say like, oh, you just don't have good enough gear. That's why you're not feeling it. No, like if 2200 defense, like 16 HP, 185 speed, 310 crit damage is, uh, on Golden Rose is not good enough. I don't know what else to say, man. Like I, I was just crushing people, but not having proof. That's the decider sometimes. When it's a game of inches, proof is what, what clutches it out. And even though I don't particularly like love my current lifesteal build because I think that the ER, which was good in previous seasons, I think it's kind of worthless in this season. And I really wish this 40 extra ER was 40 more crit to hit damage. So that's probably something I'm going to be working towards in the offseason because at this point, as much as I like Rose, uh, I, I really just like the Lionheart Sermia on proof. Maybe I'll feel a bit better if I'm on, like, Draco Plate on Lifesteal. We'll give that a try uh, in the future. But overall, I think this is not only my favorite character, but the MVP of the season. I don't think you could play a game on Ladder and Lionheart not be one of the deciding factors of the game. Like, no matter what was played, Lionheart was in that game unless she was banned, it feel like. Uh, maybe, I guess, against Cleave. If your opponent's cleaving you, then it's not a factor, but... Any aggro or standard matchup, Lionheart is in the game. She is that good, and that's why she is my season MVP. I usually put the season MVP on the thumbnail, but I can't not talk about Navy Captain Landy, which we'll get to in a, in a minute. Uh, here is my little Queen Charlotte. I didn't really draft her pretty much at all, I feel like, this season. Um, she ended up getting banned. Like I think I drafted her like twice to counter uh, Lone Crescent Bologna to just like dunk her from orbit, and it got banned every time. Uh, so here you go. This is what my current version of LQC looks like. Ambitious Tywin. I'm pretty high on this guy in general. I think he is very good and underplayed. The problem is that a lot of drafts that are standard have LRK and also Mediator Kawaric on like the same team. And that kind of sucks for you because, you know, they have immunity and you can't actually get any value out of uh, Flash. That said, where I had a lot of success with him actually was as my tank versus Cleave because they don't always take Ran. And if he weathers the storm, you best believe he's going to have Enrage on Battle Command and Flash just ends the game from there. So it, he's underplayed, I feel like. I feel like this is a really strong tank uh, overall. He was like kind of almost top tier for a while there, several months back. But again, Last Rider Crow is so prominent now that I think that's why he's kind of been driven out. But if LRK ever kind of falls out of favor, 
I bet you that this boy Tywin, he's going to shoot up. Bellion, uh, this is like 440 gear score Bellion. Like, this is where a lot of my best counter gears, like we talked about Shu, how I didn't play her at all and her gear's been gutted. It all went here to Bellion because I like playing Bellion more than Shu. I like using Bellion in a lot of spots compared to, I think, other players. Like, I'll take Bellion as a carry and like the 3-4 slot, even if it's like somewhat risky or frowned upon because I really like Bellion and I like the way that I have Bellion built. Obviously, you play her into Spectre. I also play her a lot into Cleave, not only to deny book synergies, but because of how insanely bulky mine is and how high my like average DMGH is, like my average uh, HP scaling damage despite the low critical hit damage that you see on your screen, it's pretty impressive. I commonly chunk people for like 60% of their health versus Cleave. So if I get two Elvises, the game is just over. Uh, and it feels really, really satisfying to have her on high quality gear like that. All right, I was joking with Crest, my my bestie, that I should put Eaton on the thumbnail because he's almost my season MVP, despite the fact that he has three unreforged pieces and a damage sword that I desperately need to replace. Eaton is a monster versus Cleave. I think on the season, I was like 16 and 1 with him versus Cleave. This character is nonsensical versus cleave if you can get him on protection set with just a boatload of hp this guy is real easy to build hp 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 and my gear isn't even like that that good you just go all hp on his right side slap him on adamant shield because he already has built-in damage share from his s2 and just go to town bro like just watch him just eat up everything i watch so many people on jacko Try to kill my team, and they literally couldn't. My Edward Elric, at its like 1400 defense, 20k HP, could not be killed from uh you know from like 70% by a Jacko because of the raw damage mitigation that Eaton provides. Like he's incredible, dude. I might make a short detailing his like kit and kind of talk about a little bit of the finer points if you could call him that because he's a really simplistic character. But I think that. If you're a new player, just like with Green Army, and you're struggling against aggressive, or more specifically Cleave, because aggro, Eaton doesn't do a lot for you. But all in Cleave with like the Rand, the Jacko, Eaton is that dude, bro. He is, pun intended, rock solid. All right, last rider, Kraut, who's probably my most drafted tank of the season. I think Divine called him Yamcha at the World Championship because he's either Dragon Ball Yamcha where he is a super useful member of Goku's team or he's Dragon Ball Z Yamcha where he just does nothing and just cries in a crater. Uh, that's pretty accurate, I feel like, overall for the character. We can put on his cool skin now so you can see it. Yeah, check that out. I love the Metal Gear Rising vibes on this, man. Mr. Thunderbolt. Yeah, this is a really sick skin. I'll be looking forward to actually trying this out in a couple of games after I'm done filming here. But yeah, Mr. Thunderbolt here um, gives immunity for the team in a format with a lot of debuffs. Obviously very good against Navy Captain Landy because of her frequent AoEs overall. Uh, good damage on the S3 mobile weapon Siegfried. Good reach versus things like Spectre. Has really strong team comps with Spectre. Um, so I understand why he's so good. He's not my favorite to play because a lot of times he does feel like dead weight. Like he does absolutely nothing. And I pointed that out in how to play Last Rider Crow. But he's still really good. Like it's the thing is like, even though like I'm like, man, but Orwell feels more proactive with the stuns and Yul has got the symphony and, and Tywin can win the game with like flash and stuff. It's, there's just something to be said. Mobile Weapon Siegfried just really is that skill, bro. The the reach, the fact that it's good versus dodge units, the you know, the good versus the units that are in the meta, the immunity. It's just it's all really good. I'm on lifesteal because I can kind of hold on a little bit longer with my S1 and my S3, specifically the S3. If you got you're in a match where you're gonna get off a high volume of Siegfrieds, Last Rider Crow and Lifesteal is really, really hard to kill. All right, here we go. It's that unit. You know the one. This one is actually just the worst, bro. Like, oh, this character. I don't have enough uh, expressions for her to show you, like, the, the one that I put on the thumbnail. But, yeah. <sighs> What's there to say that I didn't already say in How to Play Navy Captain Landy? 
This character can just turns every game into a clown fiesta. Like, if you have Captain Landy and you high roll, unless they have Rowana on their team, you win. It doesn't matter what they have. They could have Inferno Kawazu, Lethe. It doesn't matter. You will somehow find a way to win the game. She's like the miracle girl. She she just can't. It feels like if you have her, you are either destined to win or destined to lose. I know that sounds like stupid because obviously one of you guys has to win. But I have won games from absurd scenarios where I have no business winning because of how overpowered this character is. And I have lost games where I have 4v1, my whole team is at full health, and the game just decides... Here's three counters from Navy Captain Landy. All three of them salvo. By the way, it's her turn now. Ship, die. Like, I have lost those games. And it sucks. Like, I have one hit left on Lethe to just get rid of it. And it's just, it's gone. Oh, it doesn't matter because she countered. It crit. She salvoed. My Lethe died. Uh, yeah. Again, not much else to say. Her conquer. Best unit in the game right now. I think... That the balance adjustment preview that we talked about and the new Lily is coming out next week are super needed to make this character just, again, not a clown fiesta. Because the entire state of the game is the such when she's on the board. And she's always either pre banned And if she's not, I guarantee you, no matter what the play style is, cleave, aggro, tank down, standard, she's getting first picked. Character's just insane. Unbound Knight Arwell. Um, this is less ER, but more HP than where I have been in the past. I decided to go a little bit higher on the HP because um, I was on Holy Sack for a while. And I realized like uh, my Arwell is a little bit squishy compared to the average when I started to look around. Like I had about 100 or I should say 1,000 less HP. But I was overshooting my ER compared to everyone else by about 50. So I scaled my ER back to get that 1,000 HP. And now I think my Arwell is pretty incredible, uh, you know. I tried Holy Sack for a while, but there really is nothing quite like Adamant Shield to me. I think it's placed all preference, but I think Holy Sack is still a very, very good artifact. Yeah, the other best girl. The last piece, Corinne, here. Mine is pretty slow. Normally, you want about 290 with my stats, but again, I'm a turtle, so here you go. I love this character. I pick her a lot in the 4-5 slot. I, I'll even solo carry with this character if I am that confident. She's just super awesome. I love her so, so much. Super fun character to play. It always feels really good when, like, my two favorite characters, Sermia and Karen, are, like, top tier or very close to it. Like, LPK is probably, I think, solidly tier two. She's a really, really strong unit versus a lot of stuff. Um, honestly, I think people should probably uh, be picking her a bit more. I do think she's good into more scenarios than people think. I really love this character. I want to give a, a shout-out to, uh, hopefully I get his name right, I think it's softtm 17 He's the Italian Epic 7 creator. He makes some really funny meme videos. He has a segment uh, where he plays Last Piece Karin at like 300 speed set to Initial D's Deja Vu. And it is like the funniest thing I have ever seen for Epic 7. I will link that video, by the way, down in this video's description so you guys can check it out for yourself. Go check it out. Go support that guy. He's so, so funny. Savior Aden. I am on a destruction build with giga damage uh, with some bulk so that that way I can survive because I realized that my Auden was a lot worse than most other people's Auden. So I just wanted to have one that was hard to kill and hit like a truck. So here she is. One of the better safe picks I feel like in the format, assuming you have Conquer Alilius. Because if you don't have fast and you go save your Auden, that is the swiftest LPK Zahawk you've ever seen. Or you're going to have to play against like Briar Witch Zahawk, Briar Witch LPK. Uh, so Auden's not as good as she used to be. This character's still nuts, man. She's uh, she's another RNG character that's just like really frustrating to play against. Uh, very, very strong. Spirit Eye, this one hasn't changed since uh, last time. I primarily play this character for Guild Wars. Uh, I think it's the same as last season. I don't think I drafted her once. If I'm drafting her at all, it's against Green Sid Cleave because I can shoot up with Storm Sword and then, you know, they can't kill her in one hit and then I get to use Burning Possession and win the game. But Sid Cleave is not really common. It's all Jacko Cleave now. Uh, Tempest Cern. This one is not fully done. I tried her out when I first started playing for the season, like uh, about like a month ago or so, like when I started seeing people use her in like qualifiers for Worlds. Uh, I'm not like a big fan, which is why I didn't actually end up finishing her. She's good for Spectre. That's kind of about it, right? Not really too much else to say. Uh, Torrent set, obviously, to boost the damage. 
Faithless Lydica actually missing a piece of gear because there is one character that we'll talk about in the, the end here after I get done everybody uh, to actually clutch it out. Um, I believe my speed is about 275 with that last missing piece. Uh, I didn't really play Faithless Lydica all that much. In previous seasons, I would use her to kind of like be aggressive and control hand guy. That's primarily still what she's used for versus hand guy. Um, I beat almost every Faithless Lydica player I feel like I came up against on ladder. So she's like not as good in this meta as she was in the previous metas. But uh, if you wanted to build her, like I said, it's like these stats with like 275 speed and obviously 100% crit chance, which is missing from the body. Uh, AOL. I don't really like playing AOL that much, but here she is. Um, I don't actually pre-ban this character that often because I don't mind playing against her. Like I'd rather would not play against like my opponent having Conquer or Landy or Lua. So that is why um, I don't mind playing her. And I'll take her if I think that my opponent's draft is particularly weak to it. Character is just annoying to play against. Very, very cancerous overall. Um, I don't know if my stats are the best indication of how you should build the character. Um, again, I don't play her that often. I just kind of just steamroll her when I play against her. So uh, that doesn't say, you know, that's not to say that I don't think this character needs a nerf. I think this character should just be deleted from the game because... Even though I don't, I've gotten used to it. I shouldn't say that I don't mind playing against her. I've gotten used to playing as AOL um, for the most part. But she's still just like a... Like you just you sigh and go, yep, let's get this over with every time you see your opponent pick her. Sage Ball was one of my MVP candidates for last season. I think Sage is a lot worse this season than he was in previous seasons. Because the Cleave players have lots of ways to deal with Sage Ball. So he's not particularly good there. And even though he's clutched a lot of games, right now a lot of drafts have Lionheart and they also have Navy Captain Landy. Landy can't be slept. Lionheart snaps out of CC pretty consistently. So he doesn't feel like he gets the job done. Like he feels significantly worse this season than where he was like last season. Like last season he felt solidly like low tier two to me, somewhere around there. Um, this season he feels like low tier three, even like top of tier four. That said, he does do some pretty hilarious things, and he can control games uh, like the best of them. So I still do like him. He's just a lot worse than he was in the past. Solitary of the Snow. Um, I hate this unit. This is definitely like in my like top three units I never want to see my opponent draft. Uh, very frustrating character to play against overall. Um, and I obviously, I've won a lot of games as well with her. I have picked up another Abyssal Crown to try on her. Uh, at some point, but I didn't have the ability to level it up in time, so I felt I would just stay with Fairy Tail for a Nightmare, which is just solid. This is obviously one of the best characters I feel like in the entire game. Probably not tier like if it's tier one, it's like low tier one. Like it's not the tippy top of top tier, but man, this character is just very strong. Uh, honestly, like I'd rather play against Spectre than Solitary. Like Solitary feels better than Spectre right now, if I'm being honest. That's that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that's the case, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Sylvan Sage Vivian, I think she feels weaker than she has in the past because I feel like Spectre is weaker than in the past. And Solitary is really common, and that's like an auto force ban. And then, you know, she's got like okay matches across the board. But overall, um, the way that I have her built, I think is probably going to end up changing because I think this build is kind of like starting to fall out of favor. There are some people that I saw in High Emperor and even Legend. They have this really sick lifesteal Sylvan Sage Vivian on Bastion of Hope. So that that way you can't like defense break her with a Briar Witch without a Soul Burn. And you can't really control her uh, with certain characters. You can't like, you know, get her with like bombs and stuff. Uh, so I was like, wow, that's actually kind of sick. Like one of the things that Sage Vivian, why I have her on immunity, is so that that way my opponent, if they have a faster Spectre, doesn't get to stun me. Well, you could just play her on like really high resist and just kind of get there. There are a couple people, like I said, I've, I've played against on ladder uh, who have this Bastion of Hope, Sylvan Sage Vivian, and it's pretty sick. I'm going to try to do a deep dive and see if I can find those people and kind of have them reach out to me and give me that build so that that way I can eventually do a how to play Sylvan Sage Vivian and show you guys that build. Because I think that build, like the Lifesteal Mort build that Suri has, is really, really strong. Desert Jewel Bazaar. I play this guy, I feel like, a lot more than other people do. I'm still pretty high on him, but I don't think that this is his format. It's just not as good. I think if you wanted a character that punished barriers, I think going Inos with Arunka or Inos with um, Opsig is a bit better. Still strong character, just uh, a lot harder to play than he has been in the past. Here's my A. Robbie. I think it's the same as last season. I think A. Robbie is 
definitely worse this season than the last like couple of seasons like before i kept saying she was broken giga top tier like didn't feel like top tier at the start of the season then became god tier at the end no nah, apocalypse ravi was just fine there's just too many things in the game right now that uh have a high amount of control it felt like the solution to deal with apocalypse ravi was just throw a ton of control and injury at the game and she'll just disappear and that's true but it's also i felt like come at the expense of the games feeling very frustrating and very uh, RNG dependent. And I don't know if that was like worth it overall. I think it would have just been better to, you know, dial back Apocalypse Ravi than give us things like Solitaria and like Death Dealer Ray and Sharoon and, you know, all this other stuff. Because like right now, even with Shu who's up on banner right now, I don't particularly think Shu is like the most amazing character. But we've gotten to the point where there's like almost too much injury in the game. So it's kind of making it really hard to be a turn two player uh, because already you're you're at a disadvantage versus fast characters. Now you're against control and you were always, always traditionally at a disadvantage versus control characters. Now you're at a disadvantage versus injury characters. So playing slow and bruiser-like feels really, really difficult uh, in this game. Um, I still think Apocalypse Ravi is clutch. Uh, obviously won me a lot of games on my last day to secure the placement. But definitely noticeably worse than in the past. Dark Corvus on revenge set with some ER so that that way we can be zooming. He's on the team health imprint here. Uh, if we put him actually here, you can see he's at 29k. I need really 30k realistically, but this is all I have laying around uh, for revenge set. And I really want him on revenge set. And I want him over 200 speed so that, that way he could kind of be a very real threat. Surprisingly, not super great into Lionheart this season. Because everyone's on destruction with Golden Rose. So they just kind of two-shot your Dark Corvus if you don't have Mitt on your team. Or your Mitt dies uh, in the original, uh, like the, the first like wave, the first volley of her uh, I Am The Victor S3. So that kind of sucks. Designer Lilibet. Um, pretty much staple unit, I feel like, for all turn 2 players right now. Because of Death Dealer Ray. Because of, uh, of uh, Solitaria and Sharoon. And it's not just necessarily for the cleanse. Like, you just want her to have good damage. And then just kind of keep procking emergency stitching and just taking so many turns through Sharoon and just focus her down with slice to pieces while always holding model disqualification so that that way if they go for their AoE, then you can just cleanse it right away. Obviously also very good against Briar, which is Like this character is really, really important. Um, and I feel like when I watch streams, a lot of people don't take design a little bit when they really should. I think the character is really, really strong. The only thing I don't like about my build currently is my speed is a bit too low. I wish it was like 210. I think that would make me win a bit more games. But so that's another project to finish uh, in the future. Inferno Kawazu. Uh, yeah. It's just good versus Lionheart. Good versus Landy. They AoE. Cool. You get the Vigor. You just hit them with the Common Rider Kick. Boom. They go down. Good against Ocean Breeze Lulica because, you know, they hit you with the car. All right. Cool. You get the Vigor. Boom. Common Rider Kick. They die. Obviously also great if you go first pick. Uh... Uh, conquer Aloyas. In the last day, I would go Conqueror first. They would go Lulika Lionheart. I would go Mediator Kawazu. And then you would see the timer start at 59 seconds, and it would tick all the way down to one while they tried to figure out, damn, how the hell am I beating that thing? And they would usually revolve around pivoting to like some kind of bruisers, which then get countered by your fourth and fifth pick. Um, necessary unit in the state of the game because of Navy Captain Landy. Speaking of necessary units in the game because of Navy Captain Landy, here's Lone Crescent Bologna. I personally don't really like my current stat line, but this is kind of the standard on uh, the the the, uh, the counter set build here. If you want to play a counter set Lone Crescent Bologna, these are kind of the stats I think you want to go for. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I've talked to Coven, uh, who is basically the Lone Crescent Bologna master. He's given me some pointers and some builds uh, to try out, and I will be making a how to play Lone Crescent Bologna in the very, very near future alongside of Mort. Here's my Quirk, same as the last season. Still one of the best characters, evergreen character, gonna always be good. The biggest hurdle for him this season is Sharoon. You're almost always gonna see Sharoon in the past. You pick Meteor, they take Faithless. This season you pick Meteor, they're taking Sharoon because I think she provides a lot more value to your team than Faithless Lydica does and she's a lot harder to kill. Um, I don't think I have to say too much about Meteor. You guys probably already know if you've been watching for a while. Character's just nuts. Always going to be nuts until something changes with the state of the game. Fallen Cecilia. I rebuilt her just to play against Cleave. I not normally would take her into Cleave alongside of like Eaton. Or I'd take like Ambitious Tywin uh, and Eaton into Cleave. 
that's pretty much her her primary role. She's just there because she's just legitimately one of the hardest characters to kill in the game. If your opponent thinks that they don't, uh, if they don't have barrier inversion, like if they've already hard committed to cleave in their first three picks, taking fallen Cecilia on like the four or five is very very difficult for them to beat. Uh, BBK, this is my same scuff BBK from the uh, past season. I didn't play her once, but I still left her geared because it's a Corinne, and we love Corins. Uh, here's God. Uh, not too much else to say. He was very, very clutch when I have Conqueror. Like, if I have Conqueror, I love picking this guy in the 3-4 slot um, because he's very frustrating for a lot of people to, to build, or I should say fight against. Uh, but obviously, when I am on the back foot, when I don't have first pick and my opponent has Conqueror, he's a lot harder to use. Um, so he's definitely like the best example of speed privilege, I think, as Genizod called it in one of his videos. Like if you have first and you have turn one locked up, Remnant's kind of insane. If you don't have turn one locked up, Remnant's really risky and not worth it. But uh, I always love having turn one and then, you know, I'm able to play this guy. Mine is not exactly the best. It's only like 415 gear score, which by a lot of high end player standards is garbage. But I think this is pretty realistic for a lot of people watching this video. Briar Witch, uh, same as it always has been. I don't really draft her with Sylvan Sage Vivian. I largely draft her into um, maybe Navy Captain Landy, just so that way I can strip all the crit resists and then the, the defense breaks. And then obviously if they have dodge units, it's just really good. Or if they've taken like Maid or Destina for the Anya Revive. Um, characters, I, I want to say like really strong right now, but not like insanely strong. Like there's a lot of spots you can't pick her in, but when she's good, she feels really, really stupid. Uh, Operator Segret, I only play her when I have turn one and I'm pairing her with Inos. Um, and they have obviously uh, Last Rider Crowd. That's kind of it. That's the wombo combo. They have Last Rider. I have Inos. I have Opsig. I press S3 on Inos. I go zoom in. I press S2 on Opsig. I win game. Uh, Pirate Captain Flan, this is the same build as last season. I think I actually need to speed mine up a little bit, if I'm being honest with you. Um, because there's a lot of times where, like, I would get outsped by stuff, and I was like, mm, this is not it. Maybe I need to go, like, 230. Um, character's very, very strong. We're in a very uh, debuff-heavy meta, it feels like, at least uh, if you're slow. Like, if you're playing standard versus standard, then somebody's probably being the aggressor with debuffs. Um, the state of the game is very much like... You know, I have a debuffer that counters your cleanser, and then my cleanser counters your debuff. So, like, one side is just filled with debuffs. The other side is just filled with cleansers. Um, and I don't know if I feel like uh, I like that style of gameplay. But, yeah, there's no denying this character is really, really strong. Uh, Archdemon. I played her a few times, but um, she's just really not it. Because Mediator and uh, Last Rider are everywhere. And a, a Ravi is kind of seeing, like, a downturn. Uh, you could play her against Navy Captain Landy and seal her, which is kind of cool. But again, those are primarily paired with like either Mediator or Last Rider or some kind of uh, like cleanser to keep her off the seal. So I think that Archdemon is definitely one of the ML5s that has fallen from like top tier, fallen the farthest. Like she feels pretty low tier right now, if I'm being honest. Uh, Champ Zerato, same as last season. I only pick him in tandem with Edward Elric when I know my opponent is just all in on debuffs with no real damage because it's just a free win. Uh, Spectre, uh, I think this is my same Spectre as last time, and it's not particularly uh, any different. I, I think Spectre, I'm kind of down on her compared to where I was in like other seasons. I thought she was like legitimately one of the best um, like turn ones, like you know pick ones uh, in the game previously, but in this season, I don't think you can pick her on one at all, man. If you go her on one. They usually go Last Rider, so you can't have it. And then they take Savior Auden, which is a nightmarish character for like any aggro or cleave comps. Because a lot of cleave and aggro comps try to start with Spectre. And it's just super counterable. So Spectre is a lot more vulnerable now than in the past. But like if you let your opponent have Last Rider, um, and then you have to be wary. Like they're probably going to try and take Spectre. Because Last Rider Spectre is like, it's such a power couple. It's just very, very hard for your, uh, a lot of players I feel like to beat. Here's my damage Zia. Wouldn't trade it for the world. I love Time Matter and Bruiser Zia. It's super, super good. Uh, won me a lot of games because people will expect, oh, I ban your your one guy. You don't have any damage. And then the, the damage base Zia actually kind of gets you. Um, shout outs to, to Evan uh, over in Cars Guild. Uh, I don't know if you'll get mad at me for spilling the sauce, but now that the season's over and there's a bunch of uh, counters coming out, he built Zio like mine. 
but with no bulk, with a 100% crit hit chance, so that, that way he can just two-tap the Navy Captain Landy. He just ignores their anti-crit, and he just goes, yeah, dude, here's the S1, S2. You just die on one hit because he's just giga damage on time matter. That is so sick to see that. Like, that is such a strong tech, and it's something I think you guys can try uh, in the preseason uh, if you're willing to give it a shot. Uh, necessary character, as always, for any turn two player. Like, when Zero Rerun comes out, you better make sure you have the Mystics to get the character. Uh, otherwise, I highly encourage that you start getting fast gear in a hurry, which you probably can't because it's entirely RNG dependent. Next up is Inos 2.0. I've already talked about this. I only really play her in tandem with the uh, Opsig or like Arunka. And as you can tell, I don't do that often because it's not fully reforged and it's on a 75 neck. It's just kind of what we have laying around. Um, that's pretty much it. Like, it's just I'm picking with them against Last Rider Kauf to try to set up a cheese cleave. Um, I think this character is underplayed. I think she's good. Not like amazing, but she's good. The problem is like we're in a Soul Weaver renaissance, as I like to call it. There's just too many good Soul Weavers currently in the game. So I know I think fails to stand out for a lot of people as a result. Death Dealer Ray is obviously my next project. Didn't get around to building him for the season, but I did want to highlight he's actually insane. Really powerful fourth pick against slow or bruiser teams. Just kind of wins the game uh, outright. I'll probably go for a speed set build on him first and foremost with no ER, which will be uh, with Wondrous Potion Ball here. But I will give Water's Origin a try. And the last character that I want to talk about. <laughs> I didn't favorite her, but Lua. This is my... I built this Lua hastily in the last like five hours of the season. This is not a good Lua, as you evidenced by the blue boot and the 285 speed when you really want this character to be like 290, 300 or so. Uh, and you can tell, I didn't even mullow this stuff, bro, because I like don't even care about this character. I just leave this character on pre-band status, the whole thing. But I've talked about it in my previous videos, like especially like the Musashi video, about how catching somebody off guard is a very powerful tool. So everyone is so set in their ways of just... I pre-ban Lua, I pre-ban Lua, I pre-ban Lua, I pre-ban Lua, right? I stopped pre-banning Lua on the last day. And guess what? Like, nobody was picking her because nobody has her geared because she's always pre ban And then, so they'll go, like, first pick Navy Captain Landy, and you're like, cool, here's a Lua. And, like, you can just see the timer just, like, goes from 59 seconds all the way down to one, as they're just like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, it's like you can kind of feel them, like, panicking on the other side of the screen. Um, so yeah, that, that was the, the logic for this one. Uh, I just threw together. I literally was like, sort by speed. What do I have that's like in use? Uh, like I just put an effectiveness ring on the character and then just get whatever leftover speed gear that's not on somebody and just jam it on a character. And I want a lot of games because this character is broken. And I'll be honest with you, you guys at Smilegate and Super Creator, if you're watching this, you broke Hua Young's legs last October. I expect, no, I demand you break this sassy lady's fan. In October, like this character needs to get gutted. It is not healthy for the state of the game. If you are not going to change this character, then please give me some kind of extra ban so that, that way I feel like I actually have two pre bans again. In fact, a good suggestion I've heard a lot mid bans, as in after both players have selected like two or three characters in the middle of the draft, both players get to strike again so that, that way they don't have to play against specific stuff because they can kind of see how your strategy is developing. Uh, so that would be a better way of going about it. Uh, I think uh, when talking to some other people, they said three free bands might be uh, a bit much because it kind of elevates Cleave and makes Cleave uh, a bit stronger. Cleave is definitely the weakest play style right now, I feel like. But to that, I say good. <laughs> I don't think that, that uh, Cleave in general should be something that we'd want to celebrate or have be uh, at the top of the meta because... It's not good for business or spectators if you just win the game outright. Like, could you imagine if Worlds was all cleave mirrors? That'd be miserable. It'd be over in a flash. It just wouldn't look good. It doesn't really look enjoyable for anybody who's not playing the game and spectating to, like, want to hop into the game. Because it's just like, wait, the other guy didn't even get to play the game. Solitaire is not a good game, bro. It is a, uh, it's as it says, Solitaire. So... So yeah, that's, a, that's it for the Valor season. Uh, this one's a little bit shorter, I feel like, but that's because I think overall my roster is shorter and smaller and more compact this time compared to last time. I feel like I played a lot less characters than I did last time because 
the characters that are really good this season, they're just super, super good. And you just kind of have to lean into them. Like Lionheart is the MVP because I think I played her when I was able to, right? Almost every single game. Same thing with Navy Captain Lindy. If, I'm, if it's available, I'm taking it because it's just that good. Those are definitely, I think, the uh, the two best damage dealers from this format. Let me know how you did in the Valor season down in the comments below. And if there's any other questions I can answer for you, as always, let me know. Finally, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye now.